I'm going to use the two images that I've got up on the screen here to perform post-classification change detection. So on the left hand side I've got my October 2009 image and on the right hand side my June 2010. So just with post-classification change detection, it's, it obviously needs to have images that have already been classified and preferably using the, the same statistics. So each class should actually represent the same feature. The other thing is that it only ever works on, on two images. So you can only look at the change from date one to date two. You, you, there's no way that you can assess what's happened between those dates. Now if you already have a look at the images that I've got displayed there, now without actually referring back to the original Landsat images from, which, from where these have been derived, you can see that they are a little bit different. Now the challenge here is to try to understand whether or not that difference is related to change or if it's due to the radiometric calibration of the image. And that's the problem also with post-classification change detection, or any change detection for that matter, is that any error that's that's within the base images will be amplified as it as it continues through the process. But to for, to perform the post-classification change detection, we simply go up to classification, post-classification, and change detection statistics. Now here it asks us what the initial state image is. So we're going to use the October 2009 image as that was acquired first, so that will be our initial state. So we select that one and click OK. Now then it asks for our final state image and I'm going to use the June 2010 image here to, to demonstrate the, the last image in the sequence. So I click on that one and OK also. Now what it's asking in this dialog is for us to define equivalent classes and this has actually already been done automatically for us given that the classes are identical for in one image to the other. So for example if I look down at the paired class down at the bottom it tells me that woody vegetation in one image is is classed also as woody vegetation in the other image. Now if there was a spelling error in the way one class has been classified in one image compared to the other or if the name was slightly different then you would see them in the upper area here and you might need to add add pairs yourself manually. But this has all been done for us automatically because our naming was the same, we used the same regions of interest so we can just click OK on that one there. Now it asks us what, what type of report we would like and I'm going to keep that the same here so we'll keep the pixels, percent and area in, into our reporting and also ask if we would like to output a classification mask image so we'd like to do that so we click on yes and if we go through to navigate to our output directory and enter an output file name there that will, and click OK that will start the process for it. So once you've run that process you'll come up with two things. The first thing is a report based on the change detection statistics Okay, so we, we're looking here, it looks somewhat like our confusion matrix that we created for our supervised classification in the first instance. What we have in the, in the top here is the initial state, okay, and so they're the, they're the columns that you see across the top, saying so water, uh, uh, burnt area, bare ground, etc. And you can change the, the width of those columns there. And as, as we look down the side here, we can also see the final state. All right, so ba basically this is saying what we see in October across the top versus what we see in June down the, down the side here. And we're looking at the degree of correspondence. And in the first one where we've got pixel count, the pixel count tab activated, this is telling us the number of pixels, for example, in, in water in the, on the first date that were also water on the second date. Now sometimes it's actually easier to look at this as a percentage of the total. So if we click on, on the percentage tab here, you'll be able to see this and try to explain it a little bit easier. So again our initial state, what was water in, in October and 99% of the time it was still water in, in June the following year. Okay, so you'll see the class total down the bottom being 100%. So that will be the sum of all those ones there. So if there had been any change from water to something else, you'll see values in, in, in the other cells there. So we've got water at 99%, um, 2% uh, of that, sorry, 0.02% of that um, turned to mangroves in, in June of 2010. And so that is potentially an error, but it may not also be. That might also be 
uh, variation in tide there as well. So water was at, the water hasn't changed a lot between the two dates, which is something that you would expect. However, what we see in in the other classes, for example, if we want to look at burnt area, which is a class that we would expect to change between October and June. So we have burnt area that an area that was burnt in 2009 in October um, then is apparently water in 2010. So we'd, we'd have to query those areas and have another look at the image and see if that was if that was correct. So is it an area that had become inundated or is it misclassification? We have also areas that were water that have apparent sorry that were burnt areas that are now classified as mangroves in 2010 sorry in June 2010 and also a large area that is non-woody vegetation and so that could be areas of regrowth and that would be expected to some degree. So you can continue looking through the changes and analysing those. You can also look at the area in square metres and that gives you an idea of exactly how much of an area has changed over that time. And if, you, if you're needing to remember exactly what you used as your inputs, you can go to the reference tab there and that will just, just remind you exactly what's been included there. Now the other output from the, the post-classification change detection is, is what's called a, a change detection image. Okay, So if we have a look in the available bands list here, I've got my change October to June and it's displayed as a number of different layers and what it's showing is how areas have changed from one date, the first date being October 2009 through to June 2010. So if I load the first layer for example, what comes up is, is a large area of black because there's a lot of area that hadn't changed so there's those areas that hadn't changed at all are just uh, remain black pixels and if we click in areas that have changed, they have been assigned the new class colour. So for example, if I look at the cursor value of any of these individual cells, this, this area was water in 2010 October and has now been classified as burnt area in, two, in, sorry, in 2010 um, June. So October 09 to June 2010. Okay, so then we go back to our original image and check to see if that was, that's an actual correct change or if that's false change based on an incorrect image classification. And you can go, go through each of the individual bands, which are all, all basically image classifications, indicating how one class has changed to another class. So this gives you a spatial representation of change, whereas the table gives you uh, an actual values or quantitative analysis that you can then use for example in Excel to create graphs as 